In this video I'm trying to transform this rusty chunk of iron into this awesome piece of machinery as addition for my wood workshop. Well, it starts where it used to live the last 100 years. The switch of this planer was mounted to the wall, so disconnecting it from power was not as simple as pulling a plug. To be able to move this beast we needed to take the biggest things apart so we took off the two tables, the motor and also some wheels and stuff to get it a little smaller to make it fit through the door. With the help of these steel tubes and the pallet jack, we could lift it like a bridge to put the pallet underneath. With it on a pallet it was now pretty easy to move around, so we just had it to get into the horse trailer, which we used to transport it to my workshop. A horse trailer is pretty good for transporting such heavy equipment as you can use the hatchback of it as a ramp to get it into the trailer. So the old space was empty and in my shop was waiting a whole lot of work to be done. <laughs> to properly rebuild the whole machine I have to take apart everything to the last screw. That means like a thousand parts. So I tried to do that in little steps. At first I wanted to get everything off the main body of the planer, but leave the parts in as big sub-assemblies as possible. So that there are not too many parts at once. So then I could start cleaning and repainting the main body of the planer first and then do it in little steps, sub-assembly by sub-assembly, disassembling it, cleaning all the parts, assembling it, putting it back onto the body of the planer. This is actually the first proper job for my newly built gantry crane that I really couldn't do without it. Well, here on the pictures, the cutter block doesn't look that heavy, but fully assembled like this, there was no way on lifting it on my own. So, without the gantry crane, I wouldn't have been able to pull it off the main body. The next bigger part was the table of the thickness planer. This already was hard to move with all the handles attached, but now I only had this little gear to turn it up. So to make it a little easier I lifted the whole planer or what's left over of it and then lowered the body instead of lifting the table with this gear. That worked pretty good, just took a while. Well, I thought it was a good idea to start with a pressure cleaner for rough cleaning, but well, I think it just was a pretty nasty work as it was freezing outside and I could probably just have started with the angle grinder right away. It probably wouldn't have made a big difference. Of course, I immediately dried it afterwards, so it won't rust on the blank surfaces and I used also compressed air in all the holes and threads I can reach. To get rid of the rest of the dirt, I used wire wheels and these cleaning discs on my angle grinder. These cleaning discs are very good on smooth surfaces, just on rough surfaces. They use up way too fast for their price, so there I always use the wire wheels instead. Immediately after cleaning it with the angle grinder, I painted it so it had no chance to start to rust again. Uh, 
A hundred years ago the people were probably a little smaller or at least the work height was lower so I added these wooden blocks to make it a little more convenient nowadays. As the main body is finished, I could now start with the first sub-assembly, the thickness table. So I took this apart as well before I started cleaning all the parts. Cleaning the tabletop was way easier than expected and very satisfying. Just the camera didn't like it. To clean all the smaller parts I came up with a six step method. At first I wash it roughly by hand with a brush in the sink. After that it comes half an hour into the ultrasonic cleaner with quite a lot of soap. Then it comes into bath of acetone and after this directly into bath of hydrochloric acid. And after like half an hour in there it goes into a bucket of water before it gets a coat of oil. Of course only the parts who won't get painted afterwards. Well by the way be really careful with hydrochloric acid as it is kind of dangerous turns out. Well of course I learned that in school as well but I thought the stuff you can just buy in the hardware store without any problems um, with a concentration of 30% turns out that is quite a lot so if you get it with like 30% or even higher make sure to thin it to about 10% that's still definitely enough to clean the parts properly and it's still also dangerous enough so make sure to stay safe and protect yourself. 